Today's topic is the hyperbola. Now the hyperbola is one of the four conic sections and I've already done videos on the other three, the circle, the ellipse and the parabola. So you might want to check out those as well. But today it's all about the mathematics of the hyperbola. The hyperbola is one of the conic section family of curves which also includes the circle, the ellipse and the parabola. It's obtained if a double cone is cut by a plane inclined to the axis of the cone in such a way that it meets both branches of the cone. Of the four conic curves, the hyperbola is the one least encountered in everyday life. A rare chance to see the complete shape is when a lamp with a cylindrical or conical shade throws shadows on a nearby wall. Part of a hyperbola is produced by the liquid that climbs by capillary action between two microscope slides held vertically and almost touching. A hyperbola is the path followed by a smaller object that is travelling fast enough to escape completely from the gravitational pull of a larger object. Some comets, for example, have hyperbolic orbits, also called open orbits, so that after one swing around the Sun, they head off into interstellar space, never to return. It can be difficult to tell in some cases whether a comet's orbit is hyperbolic or is highly elliptical and therefore closed. In fact, one way to think of a hyperbola is as a kind of ellipse that is split in half by infinity. Not surprisingly, the hyperbola and the ellipse share many inverse relationships. For example, whereas the ellipse is the locus of all points whose distance from two fixed points called foci have a constant sum, the hyperbola is the locus of all points whose distances r1 and r2 from two fixed points f1 and f2 is a constant difference r2 minus r1 equals k. If a is the distance from the origin to either of the x-intercepts of the hyperbola, then k equals 2a. Also, let the distance between the foci f2 and f1 equal 2c then the eccentricity, a measure of the flatness of the hyperbola, is given by E equals C over A. For all hyperbolas, E is greater than 1. The larger the value of E, the more the hyperbola resembles two parallel lines. Just as the circle, for which E equals 0, is the limiting case of the ellipse, for which 0 is less than E is less than 1, so the parabola, for which E equals 1, is the limiting case of both the ellipse and the hyperbola. A hyperbola has two asymptotes, the never quite attainable limits of the curve's branches as they run away to infinity. The transverse axis of the hyperbola is the line on which both foci lie and that also intersects both vertices or turning points. The conjugate axis goes through the centre and is perpendicular to the transverse axis. A rectangular hyperbola has an eccentricity of root 2, asymptotes that are mutually perpendicular, and the property that when stretched along one or both of its asymptotes it remains unchanged. The standard equation of the rectangular hyperbola is x squared plus y squared equals a squared where a is half of the distance between the foci. The rectangular hyperbola was first studied by Menaechmus. Euclid and Aristias wrote about the general hyperbola, but only studied one branch of it, while Apollonius was the first to study the two branches of the hyperbola and is generally thought to have given it its present name. Here's one way you can construct a hyperbola. First draw a circle of radius about 1 inch, 2.5 centimetres. Mark a point half an inch outside the circumference. Place a set square so that the right angled corner A is on the circle and one side AC passes through P. Draw the line AB and repeat with different positions of the set square. The drawn lines will all touch a hyperbola. 
The pedal curve of a hyperbola with one focus as the pedal point is a circle. The pedal of a rectangular hyperbola with its center as the pedal point is a lemniscate. The evolute of a hyperbola is a lame curve. If the center of a rectangular hyperbola is taken as the center of inversion, the rectangular hyperbola inverts to a lemniscate, while if the vertex is used as the center of inversion, the rectangular hyperbola inverts to a right strophoid. If the focus of a hyperbola is taken as the center of inversion, the hyperbola inverts to a limason. In this last case, if the asymptotes of the hyperbola make an angle of pi over 3 with the axis which cuts the hyperbola, then it inverts to the trisectrix of Maclaren. Moving on now to three dimensions, a hyperboloid is a quadratic surface of which there are two basic forms, a hyperboloid of one sheet generated by spinning a hyperbola around its conjugate axis, and a hyperboloid of two sheets produced by rotating a hyperbola about its transverse axis. The hyperboloid of one sheet, first described by Archimedes, has some particularly remarkable properties. In 1669, Christopher Wren, the architect who designed St Paul's Cathedral in London, showed that this kind of hyperboloid is what mathematicians now call a ruled surface, a surface composed of infinitely many straight lines. This fact enables a close approximation to a hyperboloid to be made in the form of a string model. Two circular disks of the same size are held parallel, one exactly above the other, by a framework. Strings are then run through holes near the circumference of one circle to corresponding holes in the other circle that are a fixed distance further around the circumference. Each string is perfectly straight but the surface that emerges takes the curved form of a hyperboloid. For the same reason, a cube spun rapidly on one of its corners will appear to describe a hyperbolic curve when viewed side on. Hyperboloids are seen in the human-made world in the form of cooling towers at power stations and, most strikingly, in the shape of the McDonnell Planetarium in St. Louis, Missouri. The designer of this building, Gaio Obata, chose the surface because the hyperbolic paths of some comets suggested the drama and excitement of space exploration. That's it for now. I hope you found this useful and that you'll join me again soon to discover more mathematics.